Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Today on Cooking with Tammy, I'm going to show you how to make the ultimate jambalaya. So without further ado, let's introduce these ingredients and get to cooking. First on up is our turkey ham. However, you can swap the turkey ham and rock out with sausages, whichever one you prefer. We also have some chicken breast that I cut up in cube bite-sized pieces, along with our celery, diced bell peppers, diced onions, and our fresh herbs. We're going to be using fresh parsley, along with fresh basil, fresh oregano, and thyme. We also have our bay leaves. For our seasonings, we're gonna be rocking out with smoked paprika, Cajun seasoning, Creole seasoning, and seafood seasoning, along with salt and ground black pepper, only if necessary, a can of Rotel tomatoes. Yes, we are. What is Rotel? Rotel could be used for more than just making Rotel dip. It consists of diced tomatoes and green chilies, tomato paste, along with rice, jumbo sized shrimp and our chicken broth of course and without further ado let's get to cooking first thing we're going to do to our skillet is we're going to add a small drizzle of oil add whichever oil you prefer just in case you're inquiring i'm using avocado oil and for those of you who don't like avocados no the oil does not taste like avocados once we're done we're going to introduce our meat to this pan we're going to saute or fry our sausages on up in this instance yes we are using turkey ham it's not actual pork but it is in the form of ham only difference is it's turkey and let me tell you son it tastes absolutely delicious we're gonna allow our sausages to brown on up so in the meanwhile let's season up our chicken we're gonna add a small drizzle of oil just a small drizzle don't add a lot because you don't want your food to be oily once we're done we're gonna hit it off with our Cajun seasoning of course if the salt content and the Cajun seasoning that you're using is very minimal add a good amount of Cajun seasoning because we want to get that nice Cajun yummy flavor going on. Once we're done, we're also going to add our Creole seasoning. We're going to mix it on up really good. Make sure the seasoning is incorporated perfect with our chicken. Now would be the perfect time to check on our sausage. So let's get in there, mix it up really good, toss it around, flip it on over, allow it to brown on the other side as well. We're gonna start with removing the top and the bottom of the celery. So I find the easiest way to dice the celery on up is to split it down the middle in at least, let's say, about two to three pieces, depending on how wide the celery is. And once you're finished, you're gonna get in there and just basically dice it on up just like this. Easy does it, no fight, no fuss, no worry. <laughs> We're going to repeat the same process throughout, and before you know it, we are going to be done dicing up our celery. Let's be nosy and check on our sausages, and yep, as you can see, it's nice and brown and ready to go. So we're going to make a space in the middle, and we're going to add our chicken pieces and spread it on out in the pan. Give it that even space and allow it to brown on up on all sides. Now you know we gotta keep this train moving, all right? So in the meanwhile, while our chicken is browning on up, let's add a small drizzle of oil to our shrimp. And let's also hit it off with some Creole seasoning. Along with our Cajun seasoning. I'm gonna add a good amount of Cajun seasoning only because as most of you know, this Cajun seasoning right here does not contain any sodium whatsoever. We're also gonna hit it off with a small amount of seafood seasoning. Trust me, this seafood seasoning right here, you don't need to add a lot because the flavors are definitely there. So a small amount goes a long way. Once we're done, we're gonna get in there and mix it up with our trusty hands, yes. Mix it on up really good. Make sure the seasonings are literally stuck and stick to the shrimp. All right, guys, we want all of the flavor that we could possibly get out of this jambalaya. Our chicken is finished browning on up, so let's incorporate our chicken with our sausage. Let's mix it up really good. We're going to remove our chicken and sausage from the pan, place it into a bowl, and reserve it for later. Now 
Once you remove the sausages, you're gonna realize that we have a dirty pan. OMG, it's time to call Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> you would do no such thing because guess what? All of our flavors is tied into the bottom of this pan, yes. And it's gonna make our dish taste absolutely delicious. We're gonna hit it off with a small drizzle of oil. We're also gonna introduce our bell peppers along with our diced onions and celery. Once we're done, we're gonna mix it on up. We're not gonna overcook our veggies because we want big presentation at the ends. And if we cook down our veggies too much, they're gonna be totally softened, of course, but they're also gonna lose their color vibrancy and that's not cool, especially when you're serving it up. You want that presentation to remain. So we're not gonna overcook our veggies. At this point in time, we are gonna introduce our garlic. I didn't add the garlic along with the veggies simply because we didn't want our garlic to burn, all right? We want everything to cook in the appropriate time. Mix it on up really good, let it do what it do. And in the meanwhile, chop up that parsley really good. Grab that basil and chop that one up as well, along with our fresh oregano and fresh thyme. Unfortunately, the stems on the thyme is a little too thick. So cutting into it with a knife is not really gonna get the job done. However, I'm gonna share with you a quick tip. When it comes to the thyme, it's much easier to pull the leaves off in the opposite direction. And as you can see, we have our fresh thyme leaves and they're ready to go. It took us no time whatsoever to chop those fresh herbs on up. Using this time to check on our veggies once again, we're gonna add our tomato paste. Definitely add a good amount of tomato paste, not only because we're looking for our jambalaya to have a nice color, but we also want it to have a nice flavor as well. Basically allow the tomato paste and the veggies to cook on down just a slight bit. Let's add our chicken broth. Give it a good stir. And at this time, the deglazing process should have started. Let's jazz this pot on up with some extra flavor and seasonings. We're gonna add some more Cajun seasoning along with our Creole seasoning and our bay leaves and smoked paprika. We're also gonna add our Rotel tomatoes. Get it on in there. You can definitely add the Rotel tomatoes right after you add the tomato paste. However, it's not gonna make a difference. Give it a good stir once again. It's about that time we are gonna introduce our rice. Yes, we are. <laughs> Get in there, give it a quick stir, make sure everything is perfect. We're gonna reintroduce our sausages and chicken back to the pan. Then we're also gonna get in there and add our fresh herbs, OMG. If I tell you guys the aroma right now, smell -o vision is definitely needed in order to understand what I'm trying to say right now. Once we're done incorporating our rice and our sausages and everything else, we're gonna lower the flame just a bit, cover it on down with the lid, check on it periodically, of course. It's in about 12 to 15 minutes, we're gonna check on it to make sure nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pan. I can hear you right now. Oh my goodness, that food looking good. Yep, stop salivating, cause we ain't finished cooking yet. <laughs> the rice is still a little bit firm. During the cooking process, what I did was I removed some of the liquid because after adding the rice and everything, the pan became really filled. Also, I wanted to make sure I had enough liquid on hand. As you can see, I'm gonna add just a small amount of liquid. I also wanna go ahead and cook the shrimp. All right, guys, I know you didn't forget about the seafood. If you don't want your jambalaya to be too wet, too moist, or soup-like textured, or too dry, it's important that you add enough liquid to rice ratio and vice versa. 
add our shrimp to the top yes if you want to literally put the shrimp under the rice you can definitely do that as well but for now i'm going to place the shrimp on top and of course it's all for that presentation all right we're going to cover it on down with the lid and at this point in time is no need to blaze on out with a high flame we're going to lower that flame to the lowest setting cover it on down with the lid and allow it to do what it do after about five minutes this is what we have yes it took about 20 minutes to put this delicious rice dish together guys let me tell you something this recipe right here nevertheless was absolutely phenomenally delicious it was everything trust me when you use cooking with tammy's seasoning brand you're gonna realize hands down every dish comes out perfect last but not least we're gonna hit our jambalaya off with some fresh herbs fresh parsley for that beautiful presentation and of course we're gonna squeeze some lemon juice onto this shrimp once we're done we're gonna serve it on up and of course you can always thank me later by the way i'm gonna get back on camera and we are gonna be cooking together and we're gonna be chopping it on up yay <laughs> as always i'm your girl cooking with sammy i would definitely catch you guys in another video talk to you later bye guys